Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from the UK. Today is Saturday the 29th of July 2023. I'm so glad you're joining me today to talk about some knitting and some crochet blankets as well. I will be honest, I haven't done a crazy crazy amount of progress this week. It's just been really, really full on recently and usually I would maybe skip a week with recording, but we have a visitor arriving next week and staying over the weekend and they will also be staying in my craft room. So there will definitely be no podcast next weekend. So I thought I'd get one in today just to give you guys a little bit of a sort of knitting chat update and hopefully you'll still enjoy it. Um, I think another reason why I don't tend to have a ton of progress to show recently is that I just have a lot of projects going on and I have a lot of projects going on that are sort of time intensive. So for example, my Eastlander is a full on all over color work, uh, fingering weight sweater. Another sweater that I'm showing you today is fingering weight or sport weight possibly. Um, blankets again they take a lot of time until you even see a bit of progress so I think it's also the type of projects that I've been working on which I think going towards autumn and winter yes I'm saying it um, I think that should change because I'm going to be knitting with thicker yarns and I think doing some different projects and also I will be honest I have been doing some secret knitting which I will share eventually but I can't right now so yeah just a bit of background for you there Anyways, if you're watching for the first time, welcome. I should have said this first. If you are coming back, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I do keep Ravelry uh, project pages for my projects. So if you have any questions on needle sizes and yarn names and all of that, if you can use Ravelry, please just use the link below the video. And if you cannot use it, then please feel free to comment and I will try to give you that information. All right, all right. Um, no finished objects. I haven't finished anything. I feel like I've barely knit. I feel like I've just blinked and this whole week has just gone like that. To be honest, it's just been, there's so much going on in the background at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is just summer. I thought it would be more relaxed this summer now that like all the regular sort of toddler events and everything are sort of paused for the summer, but I think because I thought summer might be boring, I've just like scheduled everything in and it turns out it's really busy. Anyways, knitting. Um, where should we start? You may remember my... Where did it go? You may remember my Helix, uh, Helix sock or Helical knitting sock. I have literally just done the cast on and two, three, four hours of two by two ribbing. That's all I've done on this sock, so it really doesn't deserve to be on this podcast. But what I did tell you is was that I wasn't really enjoying this and I was most likely going to cast on a strappy vanilla sock. Most likely Fab Funky Fiber Arts yarn. And that is exactly what I did. So you may remember my husband got me some lovely Fab Funky Fibers yarn for my birthday um sorry for reaching this is the yarn that he got me so it's fab funky fibers who is in the uk and this is colorway octavia which in the beginning i wasn't 100 sold i wasn't 100 sure if i was going to love it but so this is a 250 gram ball so one of them one skein i have balled up to knit from it and the other one is as you can tell still in skein form um, I am in the middle of a row, which this is ridiculous, but look how beautiful the sock is. Isn't that beautiful? I actually really, really, really love it. Um, it is crinkly because again, this has been my trick on knitting. So it's just been, you know, just like cramped into this little bag and then it lives like in my buggy or my changing bag or whatever. And when I'm out with a toddler or hanging out with friends, I will just knit a couple of rows on the sock. But you can tell just by the progress I've made on this compared to my helical sock, which was just, I was just knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and no progress was happening. Um, this has been so enjoyable. I've really enjoyed the sock. Um, so it's a cuff down sock, 64 stitches. I did a one by one rib just to switch it up from my usual two by two. 
I knit a sort of medium to long leg. Um, I think it depends very much on your taste. I like to knit relatively long legs on my socks, so I think this would be like a normal size for me. I have knit longer every now and then. I also do shorter legs. And then, um, I mean, the most elegant version to do the heel would have been to do an afterthought heel. But I have been doing so many afterthought heels and I just needed a change. Because, especially because I know with the helical sock, I will be doing an afterthought heel on those as well. So I decided um, to do a shorter heel. I do the shadow wrap heel. Um, and in order to not sort of disturb the striping on the sock, what I did is I did the heel out of... Out, basically, I used the inside of the pop ball. So I'm knitting from the outside of the center pull ball and I used the center pull for the heel. So that way I got... Um, you know, I used the same yarn for the sock and the heel, but I didn't interrupt the striping sequence. It was just by chance that it ended up being sort of the colors that were coming up in my repeat anyways, and it's not the most beautiful way it's worked out, but honestly, I don't care. It is the heel. It is literally at the bottom of my foot, and what I care about is that these stripes stay in order, which I have achieved, and... Yeah, I mean, sometimes I am perfectionist and I do love an afterthought heel. It's probably my favorite heel. I just feel like I've been knitting a lot of afterthought heels, so I just need to just be something different. And yeah, I am now halfway through the foot and I am most likely going to be working on this uh, later on because, again, there's F1 on and I knit socks when I'm watching Formula One. So... First sock, shall we say almost done? We are not far off. And the sun is just coming in. Sorry, I hope the lighting isn't too bad. So that is one sock that I have been working on. And besides that, one other knitting project that I've brought to show you because I have made quite a bit of progress on it is my peacock tee slash peacock sweater. So I talked about this last week. This is the Peacock by Lene Holmer Samse. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly, or at least reasonably correctly. Um, she has both a tea version and a sweater version. Um, I always was going to make a sweater, but I didn't like the neckline of the sweater version, so I bought the DKA and the T-shirt pattern, the Peacock Tea sweater. And I'm just going to make it long sleeved and therefore I will have a peacock sweater but with the neckline that I want. Um, it does have short rows in the back which are really clever the way that they work in pattern. So you don't get that sort of awkward wedge in the end. Like it just looks... It's basically it was impossible for me to even tell which side was the front and the back because the short rows are just done really well in pattern. So I did put in a little label so I will eventually know which way around to wear the sweater. So I basically followed the pattern exactly. I didn't modify it, which is crazy because I always modify everything. Except um, once I split for the armholes, which is what I did yesterday, um, I did put in just another little set of short rows in the back. Not very many, I think just maybe I went back and forth twice. Because I was just worried that the short rows weren't enough on the neck, but I think that would have been fine. But you can never have too, you know, too many short rows, I think, anyway. So I put on another sort of panel of short rows below the yoke, but probably wasn't necessary. It was just more because that's what I wanted to do. So now I am on sleeve I uh, on body island. I'm on stockinette body island. It's just going to be stockinette from here on out, but. I'm really excited to block this because this is going to be some beautiful sort of feather and fan. So I think once I block it out, it'll be beautiful and wavy. Right now it's still bunched up a little bit, but I think it'll be really great once you wear it. And this yarn is just absolutely stunning. Maybe I will put on put in some photos of it because I feel like it doesn't come across and it also doesn't photograph very well at all. But this is the Fiber Co. Ambo in the Fair Hill colorway, which is, what is it? I think it's a wool, alpaca, and nylon blend. 
you could theoretically use this for socks and i'm starting to think maybe maybe i'll get lucky and have enough left over because i have four skeins to also make at least a shorty pair of socks because i would love some luxurious socks but this yarn is quite luxurious like i wouldn't usually probably buy this for a pair of socks i was really lucky to find this on a d stash and it looks like grayish brown but it's basically like an entire rainbow of colors in there it's never gonna show up but amazingly i am still on the first skeins so i've done the entire yoke and part of the body with less than 100 grams of yarn that's why i'm thinking i might have a whole skein left over we will see i will keep you updated um yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say about this i'm really really enjoying it i think it's going to be one of my favorite sweaters if it pans out as I think it will but I think it should because now that I'm done with the yoke like this is going to be very very straightforward knitting um someone asked me where do I find all these d-stash yarns because I think in the last couple of episodes I have gone on quite a bit about yarn that I've gotten on d-stash so for me what I do most is I follow d-stash groups on Ravelry which obviously is only an option if you can use Ravelry uh, if you're in the UK, there is a page called, or a group called UK Classifieds, and there's tons of stuff on there. Like, you just need to be very quick, because I find, especially with, like, good stuff or stuff that is priced reasonably, someone will snatch it up quite quickly. So I spend a lot of my time just, like, browsing, like, yeah, I think it just takes a bit of time, like, with everything secondhand, I think. You can get so many things, like I buy a lot of clothes, especially kids' clothes and stuff secondhand. You can find really good stuff, it just takes a bit of time. Um, which, I mean, I don't blame you if you don't have that time, but I like browsing these stashes. Um, also, every now and then you can get really lucky on eBay. And I think I'm also on a couple of like UK-based these stash groups on Facebook. So really, it's just a matter of looking around. I know some people do their de-stashes through Instagram. Um, I've always de-stashed through Ravelry, through that group, because I found that easiest. But yeah, that is basically what I do. And it just, it just takes a bit of time. And obviously, it doesn't necessarily work if you're looking for something very specific. But if you're just like, like me, curious, like what's out there in the yarny world, I think it can be quite a good way to get nice yarn and not completely overspend so yeah those are the two projects that i've been knitting on basically all of this week because i have been so tired i'll be honest i have been exhausted i cannot tell you why there's no reason i've just been tired um so a lot of time by the end of the day like when i even get to my crafty time i have been crocheting it's weird, usually I would always pick knitting over crocheting, um, but recently there's been something about crochet that has really, really just like, caught my attention. And I think part of it is that with my V-stitch blanket, which I'll go into in a second, I think my crochet has sped up a bit. Because I have always, like, I've, I've done my fair amount of like... Granny square blankets, crochet blankets in general. I've done some like half double crochet blankets. I've done some Battenberg squares. And if you are interested in those things, I did a episode about my crochet blankets just a few episodes ago. So you can always go back and check that out. Um, but I've always felt like I crochet really slowly. Like I'm a fast knitter, but I'm not a fast crocheter. But somehow, I think my crochet speed has improved massively, which is exciting. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but some flip, some switch flipped in my head and suddenly I feel like I'm much quicker at crochet. So this is my V stitch blanket, which last time I showed it to you, I was down here. So I've made a good, what is that, almost 20 centimeters, eight, cent, eight inches of progress um this is basically just a v-stitch which you can look up on youtube on google whatever you use to get your uh, sort of crafty instructions there are a couple of sort of v-stitch blankets i think on ravelry there are some full-on like patterns but the one i wanted i couldn't get or couldn't find um so i just looked up v-stitch and watched a couple of tutorials and that is what i'm doing 
I think I may have noted in my project pages how many, uh, what do you call it, stitches, chains I cast on. I don't remember, but essentially, you know, it is just, you know, just make a foundation as long as you want it to be. And then I do one row V stitch stripes. Um, and what I do is I crochet my ends in as I go. So there's this whole like fringe attached here, but in the end, I just need to cut these off and there is no weaving in the ends at the end because that would drive me insane like i think that would completely deter me of even making a blanket but this way i just you know work the ends in as i join a new color and it's very very simple so yeah i've been working on this a fair bit and i love it um i'm already sort of noticing how lovely this is um like on me as i'm working with it this is schreepjes do i have a tag i might not have a tag I have a Schreepius tag in front of me, but that's the wrong one. This is not it. Um, you will just have to... There you go. This is Schreepius Stonewashed, which is a cotton and acrylic blend. It's 78% cotton, 22% acrylic. Those of you who know me know that I usually don't work with acrylic at all. Like, personal choice, I choose not to... Um, not because of, I'm a yarn snob at all, I just try to avoid plastics when I can. But I do see the use in it sometime, like if it's going to make something really sturdy, so I can use something for a long time, I might use it. Same goes for like washability, usability, so on. Let's not get into that discussion here. You use whatever makes you happy. Um, but this is basically the only cotton acrylic yarn, and it is, I mean, almost 80% cotton that I really, really, really enjoy. Um, I enjoy working with this more than some of the 100% cotton yarns that I've used in the past. Um, I've made a baby blanket for my son, which we used to death, and I've passed it on quite recently. I destashed a couple of blankets to like a children's hospital, and it still looked perfect. Like It was completely perfect. Um, and I've Oh, yeah, I'm working on my Battenberg blanket, but obviously that's not that's finished and that's not finished. So I haven't really ever made a blanket with this yarn for myself or one that I have been using myself. But this is so lovely. Like, I feel like it's in the right sort of drapiness is warm. It's not stiff. It does like it's I, I really, really like this. And I'm really excited actually to have this you know, on my couch over winter when hopefully, hopefully it'll be finished by then. So yeah, that is one blanket that I've been working on. I have a million of million colors. I just picked like a random color palette uh, when it was on sale. And yeah, I'm just basically picking and choosing colors as I please. And I'm really happy. I, I haven't started this too long ago. I don't know if it's been a month or two. I was working on this a fair bit during Tour, Tour de France. But yeah, it's going quite quickly and I mean, it's not huge, but it's also not a small blanket. Um, so yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Um, another blanket that has actually seen some progress is my crochet wool blanket. And this progress is very much thanks to me showing this to you a couple of weeks ago, because again, I showed my blankets off and it just reminded me how much I love this one. So I've actually been putting quite a few rows in my granny square blanket as well. So as you can tell, this is just a giant granny square, um, four millimeter hook for both of these, by the way. Um, but this one is knit out of a non-superwash wool. This is out of Filcolana Pernia, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite yarns as well. So this is it. It's about a sport weight, I would say. Sport weight, 175 meters per 50 gram. Yes, 100% non super washable. It's quite affordable. Um, it comes in a million colors and I really enjoy picking colors, especially, I don't know, Phil Colana have a color palette that really, really appeals to me. So yeah, this is going to be a wool blanket, which means it'll be a bit harder to care for. Um, I will definitely hand wash this, but I don't mind making wool blankets for my family because, again, I will care for them. And also my son is now at an age where it's not a complete disaster. All I mean, it is a disaster all of the time, but I maybe wouldn't necessarily gift a 100% wool 
non-super wash blanket to like newborns parents who are not knitters or not wool people but for us this will be great i'm really excited about this and this has a very different feel like also crocheting with it to the cotton one and i enjoy both equally they're very different obviously the color palette is quite different as well um and for this one i have a bit of a color palette going on so i will always have basically i have declared three neutrals so i have this creamy beigey oatmealy color which is their marzipan colorway which is basically the best gray ever um, I have a sort of mid brown and a dark brown and then so I will always out alternate these with a colorful stripe in between so while this doesn't follow a super set color order this has a bit of a system to it with that and I am really really enjoying it as well and yeah it's so nice when you work on these blankets and then all of a sudden they're sort of becoming blanket size like obviously this is nowhere near being finished but now you can start imagining it and you can feel it and it's not just like this tiny little thing that you're working on anymore and that always makes me really excited so yeah basically that is all i have been working on this week except for some secret knitting which hopefully i'll be able to unveil sometime soon um I'm just trying to think. I don't think I have any more interesting knitting content except, oh yeah, what am I wearing? I am wearing my Tolstoy tea number two, which I have talked about a lot in the past. So I won't go into detail, but safe to say this one is definitely my favorite. Um, both of my Tolstoy teas I have knit in Woolly Knit 100% cotton yarn, held double. This is colorway mustard, and this is just such a staple. And like you can probably see like this is so drapey it's got the perfect length it's got nice positive ease and it's got a bit of a shine to it um i don't know my other one with washing it like it stayed super nice and super soft but it's lost a bit of its sheen so i'll report back how this one behaves after a couple more washes but yeah i'm really enjoying wearing this and um, we're still having nice british weather where it's it's not really that warm, it's like warmish, but then we have rain and sun, like we've gone through three seasons already today. So this is a sort of nice British summer top, I would say, because obviously I wouldn't be wearing this in like 30 degree heat. But when it's warm, but not super warm, this is really comfortable, like it feels like a sweatshirt sort of thing, or not a sweatshirt, just like a chill sort of t-shirt, I guess. So while I'm kind of over knitting toasters, just wearing it makes me think I could actually use another two or three of these in my wardrobe especially the plain colored ones like they're kind of boring to knit but they're so useful like I think that Tolstar is a bit like my summer version of my lento which I keep making again and again for like spring and autumn this is my lento equivalent so yeah who knows maybe I should look into that um yeah so that is definitely all of my knitting content for this week so thank you so much for tuning in if you're just watching that if you do want a quick live update um like i said a lot of stuff going on in the background um both fun and not so fun um i'm going into london on tuesday so i need to see if i should probably finish my stripy fab funky fiber sock so that I can hopefully just, you know, work on my second sock while I'm there because I don't want to be... I need something simple to take with me on the train and so on. Unfortunately, it's not a fun sort of... it's not a free time fun London trip, so there won't be any yarn shopping or any of that. But I should at least be in London by myself without a toddler. Um, and maybe I can get some, you know, cafe knitting or something in, who knows so i need to work out my knitting for that um and then like i said we have a visitor coming next week for a couple of days which will be great because he is super handy and he's basically said i'm coming over from germany tell me what tools to bring and i will do all the fixing in your house because he's like he's a super fixer guy so we have been you know prepping and writing lists and purchasing lamps that we're gonna get our friend to hang up and I think it's going to be a very crafty weekend, but obviously not a knitting weekend. And he's going to be sleeping in my Yarny studio, attic, room, whatever you want to call it. 
So I need to tidy this space up and that was the plan for this morning and I have not done it. I have a couple of days to do it, but I just really need to get this space into a sort of, it'll still be yarny, like my yarn shelves are going to stay there, of course. But at the moment there is yarn and needles and stitch markers literally everywhere. So I need to get a hold on that. And yeah, that is also why I will not be podcasting next week. But hopefully that should mean that by the time I do podcast again, I should have some stuff to show you. So yeah, besides that, um, we are still doing the whole buying a new boiler and getting that installed and figuring out how that's going to work, especially because they're going to be working on a house for three to four days. So I need to figure out if we're going to have no hot water for three or four days or how that is going to go. So yeah, stay tuned for that if you're interested in our house shenanigans. Um, I have also just spent like a good half hour this morning tying up my tomatoes because I have finally been successfully growing tomatoes in our garden. I put some in a veggie patch and some in pots and the ones in pots have done a lot better. I think it's because our veggie patch, which was there when we bought the house, is sort of half sunny, half shaded and yeah, it's not the best. Um, but yeah, so I decided to do a trial and have tomatoes in both and the tomatoes in pots like I think they get more sun and they have been very happy. So I think for the first time I will actually have tomatoes and like a lot of tomatoes by the end of the summer. But um, I need to just sort of hang them and yeah, they have been battered a little bit by all the winds and storms and stuff we've been having. So I spent a good half hour this morning tying them all up nicely and then I realized I've tied them to sort of the like stair railing exactly where we're going to be painting a house next week which is so stupid so i just i've just left them there for now but <laughs> that was so dumb i don't know what i was thinking it's literally exactly where we had our rendering done a few weeks ago and where we're going to be painting it so yeah i was not thinking straight there um yeah so i'll do that again mm. yeah in terms of the garden, we've also had a ton of sugar snap peas, which my son has been loving. He loves going out there and, you know, plucking like three, four sugar snaps a day. Um, and yeah, so I feel like even if I'm not knitting much, I feel like we've definitely been sort of doing things and crafting and yeah, house stuff. And yeah, it's just, it's just been really, really busy. Um, yeah. But I think that is basically it for me this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode, even though it was a little bit more rambly and less content heavy than usual. I feel like back in the day when I used to podcast um, and I was babyless, um, I would just have so much content. Like I never understood how other podcasters were like worried about not having enough knitting because I'm a fast knitter I've always been a fast knitter and I would just always have something to show and I'm definitely feeling that change now like there are just sadly and also not sadly just some different priorities and phases of life going on now and I know that eventually you know I will have more knitting time again but yeah I again I hope you enjoyed this episode Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a regular sort of viewer of the podcast, if you are. And I will see you again, most likely, in two weeks. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. I hope you have some fun with your knitting, and I will see you very soon. Bye!